Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Oh, be lifted above all other gods. We lay our crown and just sense a very strong burden to just make the altar call right now because someone is on his way to hell right now the Bible says and books were opened and another book was opened which was the book of life and men were judged according to their works from that book and whosoever's name was not found in that book he was cast into the lake of fire this is the second death please listen very carefully the business of your salvation is not a political issue the business of your salvation is not even a religious issue you will always find among so many people like this in this auditorium all the overflows outside and across the globe there must be someone who has been struggling wrestling like Jacob with God and Jesus is giving you an opportunity this service is first for you now you see the thing about the faith walk is that no one would put pressure on you and compel you but I, I admit to you by the integrity of Scripture that the Bible says he that is not joined to his spirit is none of his the only condition to belong to God in experience is that you submit your life in totality to Jesus. I'm going to make the altar call. Don't get used to the altar call as though it's just some religious thing that preachers do to show that they are serious with God. This is a serious business and someone's salvation is tied to it. Perhaps like this, our brother who came and gave the testimony, there might be someone scattered around this place listening and you're saying, Apostle, I'm tired of this kind of life. I am tired of going around in circles. Hallelujah. I'm going to raise a song. This one, I won't count one to five. As I raise that song, run like there's fire on the mountain and come before Jesus, whether you are inside here. And then if you are in any of the overflows, run to your LED screens with your heart open. Lord Jesus, I have come to you sincerely, no playing games. And you know the Holy Spirit is speaking to you by the time I raise this song. Don't sit back there watching others. This is the issue of your salvation. We look to Yahweh. Come, Yahweh. Our hope is Yahweh. Yahweh. We look to Yahweh.
listen to me the bible says and there is no other name given unto men by which we must be saved no politician's name can save you no political party sustains within itself to administer salvation no king no president no apostle no prophet no crusade can save no conference can save no church can save salvation resides exclusively in the office of the christ you can meet a man and not be saved you can meet a church and not be saved you can be a citizen of a responsible nation and still not be saved you are still coming we're giving you one more minute finally win that war don't sit back and then the Holy Ghost is convinced. We are in the days of his power. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, we, 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 are in, we are stepping into an age in the church where you will see the convicting power of the Holy Spirit like never before. People will be walking on the streets with no preacher and have visionary encounters like it happened to Paul. I'm telling you, you write this down. The Bible says in the day of his power, the people shall be willing. Those outside, make sure you don't sit back. All the overflows, you still need to come out, come out. Don't say, I came with my husband, I'm ashamed, I don't want him to think. Please, this is not an issue of husband and wife or father or mother. This is about your eternal destiny. Make your way to the front. Jesus is able to give men a new beginning doesn't matter this gentleman was on drugs was on anything you can imagine but this is the beautiful thing with Jesus he says come unto me all ye that are heavy laden weary and heavy laden and he says I will give you rest hallelujah and for those of you who are out here, I salute you and I congratulate you for the courage. Whether you are in here, all the overflows outside, and those that are following from any nation at all. Let me tell you, in the days to come, we will see revival like never before. In the days to come, we will see the move of... Revival does not start with miracles. It starts with salvation. Miracles, signs and wonders, prosperity only follow salvation. Any revival that just has to do with the sick being healed, demons leaving people and people do not meet Jesus. It's not a genuine revival. Listen, if you are a preacher here, your emphasis as far as the move of God is concerned, don't cheapen salvation because you want to be called powerful. The pressure to be called a miracle worker should never be greater than the pressure to be called or the passion to be called a soul winner. It is nobler to be called a soul winner than a deliverance champion. A soul winner, are you listening to me? Than a, a science and wonders producer. Sometimes because of the charismatic nature of the miraculous, we will downplay salvation. And for those of us who are in front here, you can come out and still not be saved because it's a matter of the heart first. While I salute you for making this decision, I want to give you 10 seconds. Just talk to the Lord by yourself before I lead you to pray. Forgive me my sins. Don't look at me, pray. You are talking to Jesus. I come before you, help me. let today be a brand new day for me is someone praying and perhaps for someone you may not be in front but you know your son is not saved you know your daughter is not saved you can be interceding for them don't just watch people get born again the, the service is already on maybe your father is old and about to die but he's not saved don't watch them die and go to hell maybe your mother is not saved. maybe a traditionalist maybe an idol worshiper Good works is not what brings salvation. No, we are saved unto good works. But Jesus is the only basis for salvation. Just 10 seconds. 
cry to Jesus from the depth of your heart let my father not go to hell oh God let my siblings not go to hell you may be the first person or the only person saved in your family let's use this 10 seconds to cry intercede so that seed of intercession For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Those of us in front, may I please request by way of surrender, just lift your right hand if you can, high above your head, and please say this after me. Um, let me just say this before I lead our precious people to pray. We've gotten, we've gotten um, note of situations where people come out to make genuine calls to Jesus and they return back and they don't find their bags we've had one or two issues let me tell you i don't cost people but for this one I, I will place a cost a thousand times that if someone comes to give his life to christ and you see it as an opportunity if you are a thief repent join them this this is what we are saying are we together now even the thief on the cross repented. What kind of a hardened criminal? People are coming to Jesus. Fire is falling. God is changing people's lives. And the only thing you can see, why don't you sit down and look forward to when I will prophesy favor instead of stealing? So please, I'm saying it now. I'm, I'm not saying we're thieves, but I'm, I, I owe a responsibility to say that. Those who are giving their lives to Christ or anybody in the house of God should be comfortable enough to make a genuine decision and go back and sit down. And for you, if someone comes out to give their life to Christ and they are close to you, be responsible enough to be their brother's keeper. Don't be careless and allow people to do all kinds of things. Hallelujah. Thank you very much for those of you who have come. Please say this after me loud and clear. Say, Lord Jesus, tonight... I declare that I love you with all my heart. I declare that you are my savior, you are my Lord, and you are my king. I declare that the power of sin, Satan, hell, and the grave is broken over my life. I declare that I receive eternal life into my spirit from tonight i am born again i am a child of god satan take your hands off my life i declare that from tonight i belong to jesus i go forward ever and backward never now keep your hands the lord is saying to cast out a few spirits that have oppressed people in front here you had their confessions and i declare now you can leave go every demonic spirit that will not let god's people stay i command in the name of jesus out of their lives now out of their lives now out of their lives now by the power that raised jesus from the dead out of their lives now release them spirits of addiction spirits of witchcraft all kinds of demonic things connected to ancestry wizardry i declare they are delivered now for the bible says that he, who you the son sets free is free indeed i declare you are free indeed in the name of jesus christ by the authority of god's word i declare your sins forgiven i call you bona fide recipients of the life of god and I decree and declare that from tonight you go forward ever and backward never. In Jesus' name we pray. Congratulations to you. Congratulations. Now, before you go back to your seats to join us in the service, let me please request that you have a moment with our counselors. They are waving their hands at my right. Just organize yourselves as you move to my right. All the overflows just follow your counselors and they'll have a word with you just collect your information and you'll be back let's celebrate salvation can I give you two prayer points before you sit shout it loud and clear say father, father. one more time say father, father. in the name of Jesus I rebuke the spirit of untimely death open your mouth and begin to pray I will tell you why I'm leading you to pray this prayer
please open your mouth and pray that in the name of Jesus, the spirit of untimely death over your life, your family, come against it in the name of Jesus. Is someone praying? The spirit of untimely death, I shall not die, but live and declare, my my children will not die. In the name of Jesus, the fullness of our days we will fulfill. Someone open your mouth and pray. Oh, death, where is your sting? Oh, grave, where is your victory? In the name of Jesus, we rebuke the spirit of death, either by sickness, by infirmities, accidents, the activities of wicked men. We decree and declare in the name of Jesus Christ, preserved by the blood. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I'll give you the second one. I saw this in a vision while I was praying, preparing for this meeting. I saw a family mourning. Now, I, I didn't know the family, didn't look like a family belonging to this ministry, but I saw them mourning. And what happened is like someone was going to the market and a vehicle just crossed them and the person died instantly. When God shows these things, it doesn't mean it should happen. We should allow it and say, I saw it. I've told you, dominion is not allowing evil to happen. It is stopping it by the authority of God's word. Number two, there are people who your joy always turns to sorrow. Please listen to me. Any good thing that comes into your hand or your life is always short-lived. Whether relationships, whether a job, there is no longevity of joy in your life. The moment something arrives, I want you to listen to me. There are spirits that have been assigned to cut short the joys of men. That just as soon as good things happen in your life, there's no room to rejoice. This can be true whether maritally, whether financially, whether ministerially. Please shout this from the depth of your heart. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I come against every spirit that turns joy to sorrow. The Lord rebuke you. Open your mouth and pray. Open your mouth and pray. Declare this over your destiny. Declare this over your ministry. Declare this over your business. Longevity of joy, fullness of joy is my portion in the name of Jesus, the son of the living God. He that told you have asked for nothing the Bible says, ask and you shall receive, that your joy may be full. Ask and you shall receive, that your joy may be full. The Lord rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Nothing will cut short your joy. Prophesy to yourself. Prophesy over your children. Prophesy over your business, your ministry, your faith work. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. The Bible says you have turned my morning into dancing. Is that in your Bible? It says, and you have turned my sorrow to joy. Let me prophesy over your life. In the name of Jesus, the son of the living God, everything that looks like sorrow, parakatoshka diata, around any life, any family, any business, any ministry, by the power of the prophetic, let sorrow be turned to joy now. 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 If you have any family member in the hospital or any family member struggling with any kind of sickness 
or anyone having all kinds of dreams dreams of dead people people who have gone there is no business between the living and the dead whether it is for you or your loved ones right now in the name of Jesus I separate the barrier connecting you and the dead I, I cut short that, that barrier in the name of Jesus Christ whatever link between you and the dead you go to bed and you have you some of you even see your own funeral while you are alive he said what fellowship has in the name of Jesus Christ you will not die you will not die you will not die I speak life to your spirit in the name of Jesus Christ In the name of Jesus Christ. Can I give you a minute to ask the Lord for one thing you want him to do tonight in your life? Please open your mouth. I release my faith with you. Cry unto the God of heaven. What one thing do you want him to do tonight? The Lord is about to bring his word but cry. The house of God is a place where we lift up petitions before the God of heaven. He said, he that told you have asked for nothing, ask and you shall receive that your joy may be full someone is praying someone is praying be anxious for nothing the bible says but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving don't let the devil lie to you that god cannot do it don't let the devil lie to you this is a place of faith you're operating under the corporate anointing he said, ye ask not, ye have not, because ye ask not. For in Jesus' name we pray. And Hannah went before the Lord, and she went to the temple at Shiloh and cried. And when Eli saw her, he began to be aggressive towards her thinking she was drunk and he thought she just came to desecrate the altar and she said no my lord this is a woman who is venting out her sorrow and eli spoke to her like eli spoke to anna i declare that every petition you have raised before the lord let it return to you as answers for in jesus name we pray now please greet someone by your left and right and then be gloriously seated. God bless you. Some of you never greet anybody. Greet someone by your left and right. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. You're welcome to the house of God. It's good to see everyone again. The Bible declares they go from strength to strength as many as appear before the Lord in Zion. The house of God is a place of hope, it's a place of faith, it's a place of strength, it's a place for encounters. And may that be your testimony tonight. In the name of Jesus, God is helping us and he's raising us to be spiritual men. And you may have learned here, and let me repeat again, that a spiritual man is more than a Christian. A spiritual man is more than a follower of a man of God or a religion. Please lend me your attention. A spiritual man, you are spiritual to the degree to which you, number one, you submit to the supremacy of the word of God. You submit to the supremacy of the word of God. True spirituality is not just measured by spiritual activities. True spirituality is not just measured by your loyalty to a man of God or even a church, as important as that is. Are we together? You are a spiritual man to the degree to which, number one, you have chosen as an act of your will to submit to the word of God, the supremacy of the word of God. You have exalted the word of God above culture. You have exalted the word of God above all kinds of sociological sentiments. When the word of God becomes the modus operandi of your life, you are a spiritual man. There are many people who talk spirituality, but they are not spiritual men, they are not spiritual women. 
So let me repeat myself again that you are a spiritual man to the degree to which you have chosen to submit to the word of God. Number two, you are a spiritual man to the degree to which you have chosen to submit to the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Get my teachings on the Holy Spirit. There's still another series on its way coming. Are we together? The Holy Spirit is beyond your friend. The Holy Spirit is beyond the wind, oils, beyond the dove. The Holy Spirit is beyond an influence. The Holy Spirit is God, the Spirit of the living God, sent to the believer. The primary advantage the believer has in this life is the presence of the Holy Spirit. Even what you call scripture came from him. Holy men wrote as they were inspired. They did not just guess what they wrote. It was the Holy Spirit. So if you do not submit to the person and the ministry of the Holy Spirit, you cannot be spiritual. You can be 10 years in church. Please look at me. You can be an elder in church. You can be a deacon. You can be a pastor. But you are not spiritual just because you've been around the things of God. True spirituality, I repeat, is measured by the degree of your submission to the word of God. And number two, your submission to the leadership, the ministry of the Holy Spirit. That means that in building men to be spiritual, because according to scripture, there are three kinds of men. The Bible talks about the natural man. That's the unregenerate man. One who has not even encountered Jesus Christ through the new birth experience. And then number two, the Bible talks about the carnal man. The one who is saved, but not transformed, not empowered. You have to learn this. This is not my message tonight, but I just wanted to say this. So the natural man is the one who is not saved at all, has not confessed Jesus as his Lord and Savior. The carnal man is one who has received Jesus, are we together now? But has not submitted to the ministry of the word of God and has not submitted to the ministry of the Holy Spirit. He's sensual, his life is governed by the impulses of the senses and of the flesh. Number three, the spiritual man. The difference between the spiritual man and the natural man is that the spiritual man has decided to partner with the word of God, to partner with the Holy Spirit, even for his transformation. And I have taught you here in this house that the greatest need of every unbeliever in order of divine priority is salvation. There is nothing you can give to an unbeliever that satisfies that unbeliever truly from an eternal perspective higher than salvation. That means if you see an unbeliever, um, he may be a neighbor, he may be a friend, he may be a husband, a wife, he may be your child. The highest need from an eternal perspective of an unbeliever is salvation. Then for the new believer, the greatest need of the believer that has been saved is transformation. Do not forget this transformation, the process that makes you become like Christ in experience. And that is through the ministry of the word. That is through the ministry of the spirit principally alongside, of course, other spiritual principles like prayer, corporate fellowship, fasting, etc. Then the greatest need of a transformed believer is empowerment. Because when you are transformed and you are not empowered, you will propose a lot of spiritual things that you do not have the strength and the grace to prove. Hallelujah. So you will tell people, Jesus heals, Jesus delivers, and yet there will be demons flying all around you, yourself, your church, your congregation, your family, and you can't do anything about it. So empowerment is very important. Jesus took the people through a transformative process by the word, and yet he told them, tarry in Jerusalem until ye be endued with power from on high. Hallelujah. And then of course, I did tell you that the greatest need of a transformed believer is character. And then chiefest among the character traits that is needed is humility. Because we see this in the life of Jesus. Hallelujah. So that you don't keep coming to church 
and cannot measure your growth you should be able to know what is happening to you many believers cannot exactly pinpoint what is happening to them imagine with me a student who has been in school maybe a college or university two three years and cannot tell what is happening you should be able to tell okay you you are now in the college of medicine you're four years down the line you should you should be able to prove that you are learning you are not yet a doctor certified but at least we should see that you have made progress is that true so if you've been to church for a while and there is no difference between the former you and the now you it is either the preacher is wasting your time respectfully speaking or you are wasting your own time by being in the presence of God but not being open to receive listen the church the house of God is also a school the house of God is also a school. It's a training ground where God builds people. The church is not the place of manifestation. The church is the place of training. Now you are trained like you are receiving tonight. Then you can now be released with knowledge and grace. Knowledge and grace because grace and peace is multiplied through knowledge. You can now go out and be ambassadors, whether in the marketplace, in ministry, whatever it is. The church is a school, is a place of training. And the same way a student does not pay attention in school, there are people in the house of God who also do not pay attention. The same principles that make a student excel in class are the same principles that make a, so a, a, a student excel in church. That name congregant or members sometimes can be very deceptive because it makes people very casual. I am a member. I am a... Um, but when you see yourself as a student or the Bible calls them a disciple, a disciple is one who submits himself to doctrine, to learning. Are we together? Praise the name of the Lord. My assignment as a man of God is to walk with the Holy Spirit, the Word of God, and obtain wisdom to create a blueprint for your spiritual growth. And this is my commitment. It is, it is a covenant commitment. So it has nothing to do with sentiments or emotions. I am committed and I vow to God that there is no week of my life that I will have the privilege to teach that you'll be seated here, that I'll waste your time either with valueless information or, you know, not prepare the ground to give you the kind of spiritual experience that translates to your growth. That one, you leave that to me. The best you can do is to pray for me and encourage me, but it is my assignment. And thankfully, there is a grace allocated to ensure that we are efficient. Are we together? But your own assignment is to believe and to receive and to be prepared to walk in keeping let, let me tell you this if you have been up to one two months in this ministry and you don't have any potent results it is not the bankruptcy of grace it is that something is truly either you're hearing because the bible says to take heed what you hear and to take heed how you hear what you hear the quality of the content how you hear your attitude in approaching the spoken word so my encouragement for everyone is that when you come to church, see yourself as going to a school. I'm about to learn. My life is about to change. An encounter is coming from heaven that will improve me. Wisdom is coming from heaven that will improve me. Are we together? An area of confusion in my life is about to be cleared. An area where I have perpetually experienced bankruptcy of results is about to be sorted. And you carry that expectation to the house of God. The Holy Spirit is already there. The angels of God are already there. The word is ready to come from heaven. The anointing is there to back the word. There is nothing that should stop your growth and your transformation. Hallelujah. And let me give one last counsel before we just touch on what we have tonight. When you are in the house of God, as much as possible, let your mind be here. I hope you know you can be here and yet you are not here. You can be here and you are thinking, how much have I made now in my supermarket? I hope that they didn't close it or I'm here. You know, all those kinds of things. Remember, God is a faithful father. He knows you need money. He knows you need open doors. He knows that there's a rent issue. He knows that you're trusting God for maybe a job. Just drop all those things aside 
and the Bible says they looked unto him let your eyes be on Jesus yes I'm trusting God for a business deal yes I'm trusting God for greater anointing but right now my attention is on Jesus he's about to speak and my heart is open to listen you cannot have that kind of attitude and leave the church without a blessing hallelujah father speak to our hearts tonight our hearts remain ever opened we are students of scripture we are students in the school of the spirit thousands from across the globe thousands here on ground in the name of jesus we submit to your wisdom help us we are here because we know we can be better we are here because we know that it takes training for us to reign even as kings we are here because we trust your wisdom and your leadership i pray in the name of jesus that none of us will be disappointed tonight in jesus name we pray hallelujah i'm teaching tonight on true riches please i want you to pay rapt attention true riches you can put in bracket the capital that buys money hmm. true riches i want to show you a very deep mystery in the spirit as far as you are under this grace you must grow holistically and that includes your overall rising in the name of Jesus Christ you are a man of God provided you are connected to this ministry you will be a man of God with a difference in the name of Jesus Christ that you will reintroduce ministry to our world in a way that is superior the gaps in our spiritual understanding um, is what is largely responsible for the fluctuations in our results knowledge is responsible for dominion in this kingdom the Bible is very clear as to the fact that if you must shine you must arise and then shine only because your light is come so there is a relationship between knowledge even sufficient knowledge and dominion that means every area where you are bankrupt of dominion that most likely may be an area where you have zero or incomplete or even inaccurate spiritual knowledge hallelujah that means as light comes you expect to begin to walk in dominion and last week god granted us grace and we dealt a bit with um freedom from financial captivity and i did tell you that it was not really about money at all it was helping us to understand the dynamics of the kingdom as far as um commanding or the manifesting the blessing of the lord is concerned and i'm hoping and praying that their testimony is already from that teaching and it will come by listening you can always go to our social media platforms youtube get the teaching listen to it again now for your transformation true riches luke chapter 16 i'll begin my reading from verse 11. jesus is instructing us now and he was teaching about faithfulness remember was teaching about faithfulness and his context was with regards to financial or regards to resources now money as you know and he said if therefore ye have not been faithful in the unrighteous mammon he says who will commit to your trust the true riches verse 12 and if ye have been not been faithful in that which is another man's who shall give you that which is your own let's go back to verse 11 i wish we could read that in amplified and he's teaching something about it says therefore if you have not been faithful in the case of unrighteous mammon and he calls it deceitful riches money possessions it says who will entrust to you true riches so in the mind of jesus what you call riches or money or possessions material possessions is a product and that there is another kind of capital that can buy that product and jesus gives us the name of that capital that buys what we call money he calls it true riches 
that money in scripture is called unrighteous mammon or deceitful riches do you know why because it seems to be stubborn it seems to always want to go away and run away from the hands of its owners so you find people today who are blessed financially as we know and then next moment something happens and they're in a, a very sorry state and so the conclusion is that money on its own is is, decept, is deceptive and then money is unrighteous it does not have stability there is no quality of faithfulness in it it can run away in fact proverbs says that it will grow wings and fly away hallelujah true riches this was a revelation that the lord gave me that changed my life tremendously 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 this completely altered my perception because like you know I made up my mind that as much as possible I would not manipulate God's people and I didn't want to do the kind of ministry where God's people would only grow spiritually vibrant loving the Lord but then their needs would not be met that the quality of the lives of their children I hope you know that um, when you study the subject of influence and dominion among the many indices that command influence and dominion is wealth worthy is the lamb that was slain to receive for us and he mentioned seven things and one of it is riches you can never get to the corridors of dominion in poverty the concept of poverty or having material blessings is not a concept that the Bible is silent about Jesus himself the author and the finisher of our faith was very very detailed he talked about the subject of possession resources are we together the fact that it was the will of God but also the dangers that would come to the life of a person whether you have resources without knowledge or you have the bankruptcy of those resources and any responsible ministry should be able to help God's people to understand the kingdom's way to being blessed financially or in terms of material possessions and the Lord just put it in my heart to continue from where we left off last week and I will go straight to the point because I hope that we'll have some time to pray um, so Please look up. In business, most of us here, everybody I presume, um, would have had one kind of business encounter or the other. We daily, we go to the market to buy things, we buy products, and um, or most of us here have jobs, most of us here entrepreneurs, we run all kinds of businesses, and some of us very successfully so. And so the, 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 the concept of transaction it's not something that is new to anybody who has been you know on the earth for a while particularly if you've been in Nigeria and Africa the concept of um, because we are still a cash society in other developed nations they, they, they are almost cashless and so the concept of exchange is very very is very advanced but in Nigeria here we understand almost like the butter system um, and I'm saying that because I want you to understand what it means when the Bible talks about true riches. This was a revelation that God gave me. Many people are unable to prosper in the kingdom because most people do not know the factors that control true kingdom prosperity. And now, I'm not a financial advisor. I'm not, I'm not an expert, a, a professor in finance and economics. I'm teaching you kingdom economics here. And so my, my reference, it doesn't mean I'm ignorant as to understanding the financial system of the cosmos. I'm just saying that when it has to do with communicating this perspective, our reference is largely scripture. Are we together? Praise the name of the Lord. So um, I'm going to use three people to do an illustration. Can I have, let me just use my people or ushers. Three of you, please come gentlemen. Thank you. Just, just stand here. Hallelujah. So you hold my Bible. Mr. Kayo, do you stand here? Watch this. Everybody, please watch this. Please lift it up. And 
this is what I want to teach you tonight. I'm summarizing my message. Now, call this a product. This product can be anything. A car, a house, any material thing at all. In our world, we have been taught, rightfully so, that anytime you want a product, you need money. Am I right on that? Yes. So, if I want to buy this from Mini Sakayo Day's store or mall or whatever it is, I can't walk there and just brag and boast and carry a basket, fill it up and tell them stories at the counter. Are we together now? So I must ensure that I have money. So let's assume that I have some money. Whatever price this is, I can confidently walk to him. He's not going to ask me how old am I in most cases. Is that true? He will not ask whether I'm a male or female. He will not ask whether I'm from the north, south, east, and west. Once I have the money, that means if I want you to have more of this, what do I give you? More money. Are we together now? Now, for, from the natural perspective, will you be offended if I bring out money? Can we use money? All right, so let's bring out, at least let me bring out a hundred dollar bill. Hold this, please. Just lift it up. Watch this. Are we seeing down? He's holding a hundred dollar bill. And if he wants this, what does he need to do? He will have to exchange it. Is that true? So he will receive this for the money. If he wants another product, he will still have to bring another money. So the more of this he has, the more his potential to be able to exchange for the things that he needs. Am I right on that? Now, our understanding largely is that this is the ultimate of everything. So the moment you have money like we know and we call it, you are excited because now you have the ability. Is that true? We call it purchasing power. Is that true? Yes. You have the ability to purchase this now. But Jesus is introducing something very interesting. That even this thing you call money is also a product. And that when you want it is bought and there is another kind of capital that can buy it. Are you getting the point now? So follow me now. If you want to buy this product, physical product, whatever it is, you need money. Is that true? Dollars here or whatever currency you use. But if you need money, he's saying that money itself is a product. It is bought. The name of the capital that buys this money is called true riches. That means when God wants to give you more of this, it is not this he gives you. There is something he gives you that when you have more of it guarantees that you can have this. Then you can use this to have this. Are we together now? But that that true riches is so powerful that even if you don't have this, you don't need to worry if you have that. Because that true riches can bring you the money that can bring you whatever it is you want to do. Are we together? My assignment is to show you the capital that buys money. Because for many people, they still do not understand why this thing that we call money. Do you know? I think years ago I was teaching along the lines of finance. That should be in Zari also. I can't remember. And I said many people, this thing you see, as quiet as it is, has taken many people to hell. Look at it very carefully. Has no voice, does not sing, yet it speaks. And it seems like everybody can hear it. There are people today who have lied because of this. Is that true? This thing has relocated people around the world and brought them back this thing this thing has caused trouble war between nations this thing has divided homes divided churches divided all kinds of things if you must live a purposeful and a meaningful life you must make up your mind that lack like I taught last week lack and want will be far from your life but let me tell you what most believers do when you ask them, what are you doing about the issue of lack and want? They are largely confessing. In the name of Jesus, I will not be poor. And, and that is not wrong. There is a place for that. But they just confess and say, in Jesus' name, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. And they've been doing it for a long time. And it looks like nothing is working. Because that is not the only key. In fact, that is not even the first key. Are we together? 
The bankruptcy of this has caused a lot of problems in our lives. There are many homes today that cannot experience peace. There are many children today that do not have an opportunity to go to school. There are many of us who want to do so much for the kingdom, but are incapacitated. Like I would always teach many people today, including preachers, sadly, have remained at the corridors of compromise because of this. And ladies and gentlemen, if you do not know how the economic system of the kingdom works, I guarantee you eventually you will live a frustrated life. If I ask you just, you know, as a layman, if I sample people here, four or five or any of the people following across the globe, and I ask you, how does a person have access to financial resources? Naturally, you will say a job or someone will say, do a business. If you go and Google, maybe how to be rich or whatever, these are the things that come out. And I respect those opinions, but I submit to you by the integrity of scripture that those answers are very, very, very incomplete. Pay attention and trust what I'm teaching you. I give you a guarantee in the name of Jesus Christ, the son of the living God. If you pay attention to what I'm teaching tonight, you will surprise yourself. At whatever level God has lifted you, it, you will marvel and wonder at the predictability of the system of the kingdom. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. So, he wants to buy this. Let me repeat it one more time. He simply goes here and there is an exchange right so give him back but you need this this man wants money there is something this man can bring but the the thing that this man brings is invisible it's not visible so because it is invisible and we are in a realm that only respects visible things if i ask you among these two people who is really wealthy or who is richer it is the one you see lifting what you know as money. You will look at this guy and say, this man does not have anything. And sometimes he himself will believe that he does not have anything. I will be showing you what God does to men who he wants to have this. There is something God does to a man if he wants you to have this. So when you cry and say, God, you are seeing my children or you are seeing my life. I want you to bless me. Don't just start thinking job or business. Leave those ones. There is a place for them. We are not talking jobs or business now. Just take your mind away from what you've studied and just listen to me. Because you will learn that those jobs and those businesses themselves are only there because of this. Hallelujah. So Jesus is saying, if you are not faithful in unrighteous, look at how Jesus trivializes this. Unfaithful in unrighteous mammon, who shall commit to you the true riches? Many, many believers do not know what the true riches of the kingdom. A few are already working in some of them and do not even know why their lives just magically changed. They may think it's because I am a preacher. They may think it's because I am a good businessman. They will think it's because I got a good job with the federal government or maybe with some oil and gas company and they are paying me X, Y, Naira or dollars. Those may seem like economic answers, but from a standpoint of spiritual intelligence, the only reason why men have this is when they have true riches. Are we together? You have that down? Do not forget this teaching because for many of you, God is about to cure an age long, this trouble of resources, this trouble of lack and want, this trouble. Many of you right now are already praying, Lord, let me even finish the year well. There are many preachers, the purposes of God seems to have been grounded. Believers don't seem to live a qualitative life spiritually and physically and even economically. Many great projects for the kingdom, but incapacitated financially. And this has led many people, especially we men of God, as loving and sincere as we are. But that's what happens when you have bills to pay for children, for church, and it looks like money is not coming. And then when the economy now begins to move like it is now, you see that? 
people become afraid how do i do what i need to do there are many of you here if i'm to ask you write one thing and submit now i can tell you without prophesying this is not even word of knowledge that over 80 to 90 percent of the request will be issues of supply the bankruptcy of this has caused a lot of problems and I'm praying for you that as you hear me teach in the name of Jesus, let a veil, no matter how long that veil has been, may that veil be torn into pieces. You can never become a blessing to your world if you do not have access to supplies. I submit to you. I have taught you here in Koinonia that when God calls a man, there are five essentials that are required to be able to manifest your calling and your election. One of them is your mandate. Number two is your platform. You must have a platform. Number three is that you must have access to resources, both human and material resources. There are several mission agencies across the globe today incapacitated sometimes when i sit down and i have the privilege of watching television my heart is so pained as i watch tv programs after tv programs showing you know whatever it is they are doing for the kingdom and that that whole experience will culminate in sometimes a lot of begging and pleading and begging and pleading and i'm saying no this cannot be the way of god Show us the ancient path. Will you lead us along eternal highway? We want to follow the ways of Jesus. We want to enter your rest. Will you show us the ancient path and lead us along eternal highway? We want to follow the footsteps of Jesus. We want to enter your rest. Hallelujah. So now that you have understood this and that, this now becomes what we are going to focus on. Is to capture what can make the mandate of God work for a dispensation and commit it and, and dispense it articulately to a generation. A true apostolic office is not even a preacher's office. A true apostolic office is responsible with the assignment of spiritual governance. The true assignment of an apostle is to pay the price through the sacrifice of alignment, understand God's program for a dispensation, and then get the blueprint, what it takes for the saints to excel and to execute that assignment effectively and now commit it to the body of Christ or to their assigned territories with precision, with grace, and with accuracy. Are we together? So when you see God allowing for topics like this, you have not seen how June will be. You have not seen how, uh, what's the next month? July will be, how August will be. God, who is the all-knowing spirit, is already going ahead of you to show you something. Because you see, let me tell you something about men. Most times, men do not pay at... If you see God speak, he speaks because he's securing the future. He told Noah, build an ark quickly. Rain is coming. And people thought he was joking. They kept watching Noah, his three sons, and their wives build the ark. And they just laughed. I'm sure they said, what a stupid man. And then God himself closed the door. I sense in my heart, and I'm not a prophet of doom. It does not give me joy to stand and say negative things. I wish I were lying, I would have told you sorry. But I can tell you, um, you know, influence is something that, again, is very delicate. You say something, people misunderstand what you are saying. We are responsible people. But let me say this without fear of favor. I can tell you, a serious economic issue is coming. That will make even those who are supposedly great. The only immunity will be this, not this. Not this. You will have a lot of this and still cry. Read your Bible. The only people who will be able to stand strong are those who have this. That is when the excellency of the wisdom of the spirit will be revealed. 
when COVID hits people, nobody planned it. But for three months, um, I think three months, the whole world was down. Do you know there are ministries, there are businesses that two months before that lockdown could stand and say we're millionaires, we're billionaires, but they went down within three months. And many have not been able to recover. Sadly, there are churches that have had to close, not because of demonic attacks, because of financial limitations and the men and women of God felt instead of being a thief or an armed robber I rather just close the church with honor do you think that is good for the progress of, of the kingdom no how many families children who began to prostitute themselves with the permission of their parents because of economic hardship when money failed in Egypt people came and said buy us they didn't say buy our product buy us there is another kind of slavery that happens to men when people are in this situation. People have denounced their faith in Christ. People have denounced their conviction. People have done all kinds of things because of these economic things. And I'm praying in the name of Jesus Christ that tonight God will switch someone that your confidence that has been on just this, it will shift to this. You know, I have always prayed for you, my dear people, that may you never be so poor that all you have is this. Because I am going to be showing you that having this alone is sitting on a time bomb. Even from many of you here are intelligent people economically. You are learned. You know what I'm saying. We are not doing economics here. But you know that just having money, paper like this from an economic standpoint is not prosperity. Is that true? Thank you, gentlemen. God bless you. Let me have my Bible. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so we are ready to discuss this now seriously. Let me have your attention. Father, open my eyes. Can you pray that prayer in one minute? Open my eyes by the power of the Holy Spirit. Let me see. Let me see for the sake of my children. Let me see for the sake of those who have gone ahead of me. Let me see for the sake of the work that you have given me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. True riches. I have taught you, but not in this detail, that there are seven currencies that buy money. And I want to show you the capital that buys money. These are the things you should pursue and not necessarily money itself. It is impossible to have these seven currencies and be poor i submit to you spiritually and even financially are you ready seven currencies the capital that buys money this is what the bible calls true riches that everyone who wants to have lasting access to resources that can enable you live a comfortable life advance the purposes of the kingdom and then to be a blessing to this dying world true riches number one are you ready the first capital that buys money is called meekness please write it down meekness this is the first of the seven currencies that the Bible calls true riches meekness don't downplay what you are hearing at all meekness I wrote here is a healthy blend of humility and teachability please write it down that meekness is a healthy blend of humility and teachability to be meek from the dictionary definition means to be submissive it means to be easily agreeable meekness capital number one that whoever can possess this superior currency that person is bound to have access to what the bible calls unrighteous or unfaithful mammon matthew 5 and verse 5 let's hear what jesus himself had to say let's read together ready one to read blessed are the meek what is their blessing for they shall inherit the earth one more time Do you know what it means to be given the earth as an inheritance? 
And the Bible says the quality that gives you access to that inheritance is meekness. Not just blessed are the learned. Not just blessed are the Africans. Blessed are the meek. That if you find any man who is meek, there is a relationship between that quality of meekness and access to the earth. Maybe I should show you two things the Bible has to say about the earth so that you will respect this statement. Job 28 and verse 5. Job 28 and verse 5. Can we read it together? One to read. As for the earth, out of it comes bread. Hmm. Job is giving us a mystery that every time you see bread is the earth that produces it. So when you are given access to the earth, it says, blessed are the meek, they will inherit the earth. And that as for the earth, out of it comes bread. In Ecclesiastes, I believe chapter 5 and verse 9, the Bible says the profit of the earth is for all. For how many? The profit, that means there is profit in the earth. That is what the Bible means by bread. Profit is a word you only use for business. Am I right on that? Now we see the Bible using the word profit, connecting it to the earth and connecting it to meekness. Moreover, the profit of the earth is for all and the king himself is served by what comes in the field. There are many, many people who have ignored this spiritual treasure of meekness, the quality of humility, the quality of teachability, and yet they want to prosper. They find out that the earth itself fights them. Unfortunately, all human beings also have the earth in them. So when the Bible says you will inherit the earth, <laughs> do you know what that means? He is not saying you will inherit the farm. No. Provided the man who stands before you is made of earthen vessel that you will have access, you will be endeared to men when you sustain that quality of meekness. Please listen. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Whether in form of the physical location or men who are earthen vessels. You have the advantage of the earth when you are meek. Another perspective to me is the absence of a know-it-all mentality. You see, most people have programmed failure of all shades, including poverty to themselves, because we seem to have this know-it-all mentality. No results, yet know-it-all mentality. And the Bible says, blessed are the meek. I've told you that meekness is a blend of humility and teachability. I know there can be more. Thank God for the miracles that God is working through my life. But I know I can learn more. There has to be someone who knows more that can help me know. Jesus, the word incarnate, was at the temple and he was learning. Can you imagine? I could imagine Jesus looking at all of them and speaking and saying, listen, I hope you are getting it. And he's looking at them. The word of God. Yet he submitted himself. Is that not what Philippians chapter 2 says? He says, among the many attributes of Jesus you should have, let this mind be in you, verse 5, which was also in Christ Jesus. Let this mindset of humility, meekness, show me a man who is genuinely humble. Show me a person, a church, a business, a nation that is teachable, that is meek. There will be no poverty eventually. You will conquer everything that represents lack because the Bible says your inheritance will not just be things. Your inheritance will be the earth. There are many businesses that should not have gone down, but the pride to not learn. There are many individuals who were once millionaires, once billionaires in as much as we know in terms of finances. And most of them just went down overnight because the only thing they had was money. Money minus meekness is sitting on a time bomb. Are we together? Meekness. Is someone learning? So the next time somebody tells you I am rich or I have money, 
you tell the person with respect to what if you're speaking about your bank i salute you i don't downplay that but you are you are in trouble it's one thing for you to have money in a bank it's another thing for the bank to be safe am i right on that now i love banks keep your money there they are doing their best we love them It's one thing for you to have a house or a shop or a mall. And it's another thing to trust it. God forbid, but fire can got it in one moment and burn up everything there. Money has gone. But do you have the true riches that can bring back money? Meekness. Do you know there are many people today who can tell you they had access to vast resources, not necessarily because of anything extraordinary they did. Sustaining that quality of meekness and humility earned them access to the hearts of kings, champions, and nobles. Many of you here are leaders. You run your businesses and your companies. You agree with me that nobody will draw close to himself. Anybody who is arrogant and not teachable. Nobody will want to risk, you would not risk your corporation, not even your church. So the more people carry this I too know mentality, I know, I know, even with the absence of results, you are reprogramming failure and poverty. Confidence is not pride. And pride is not confidence. Meekness. Can I give you the second very quickly? Capital number two that buys wealth is called competence the second capital that buys money in this kingdom is competence skill that every time you find a man who is competent there is a a guarantee that eventually that man is going to find himself handling resources whether he maintains it or not is another thing. But as far as having access to it, there is a guarantee. Proverbs 18, 16. Please write down. Proverbs 18, 16. A man's gift, the Bible says, make it room for him. It says, and it bringeth him before great men. This is the reason why I frown at incompetence and I challenge people, whether in ministry or in business, corporate life, whatever it is, that you owe yourself a responsibility to forget about trying to look for money because that is even a wrong approach. Are we together now? And to become competent. Competent has a voice and leaders know the language of competence. Let me repeat. If I call you right now, if I say stand up in Hausa or in Yoruba or in Igbo, there are a few people who will remain seated because they may not know what I said. That is the competence has a language. There are people that competence calls and they can hear the language of competence. Many, many believers I submit to you are very incompetent, especially as far as our corporate work is concerned or ministry, etc. We are not committed to excellence and competence. We pride around mediocrity and then we want to garnish it with all kinds of church sentiments. There are many believers who have had the privilege of projects that were given to them and they did complete rubbish and yet they are sincere believers. Competence. God grants you an opportunity to cook for kings. And because you took time just wishing that God will invite you rather than preparing yourself. Your waiting period should not be spent just anticipating days that will come. According to the law of time and chance, your day will come. So prepare while you are in the wilderness because you will see Goliath one day. Most people don't spend time preparing. Apostle, nobody is inviting me. No one is placing a grace, the demand upon the grace of God upon my life. Use that period to be preparing your sermons, to know God, to grow in the anointing, so that the day that you are now invited, like Joseph, you will not go back to prison again. It was Dr. Murdoch who defined favor, I think, as when preparedness meets opportunity. Most believers, I'm telling you, are not competent. That includes we preachers, that includes apostles, prophets, etc. That includes business people. It also includes career people. And please talk to me. If you have an organization and you are downsizing people, 
you will usually start from people you consider to be incompetent is that true or people whose value is not needed and largely it will be believers that will be thrown out and then they return back filling the church with all kinds of cries why would god do this to me why god you watch me like this as they were throwing me out i'd like you to enter a covenant with yourself I'm not called to do everything, but there must be one thing in my life when I, that I will be exceptionally competent. This is not an advocacy to be a jack of all trades, but you must make up your mind. Is there one thing that brands you out? You are a man of God and you make up your mind with the, with the, within the limit of the grace that has been given to you that you will be competent, you will be excellent. When you bring the word of God to God's people, it will be without ambiguity and confusion. You will bring it and communicate it intelligently. Grace with power. competence most times we commit very little in terms of growing to become competent but our lives are full of an anticipation for very large results and most people think that just because of you know spiritual advantages like favor no problem I don't have I cannot do anything but I know God will still favor me you are talking to men Hallelujah. How many of you will allow somebody who is just jumping and saying, I'm not a killer, but it's not a competent person to perform a heart surgery on somebody you love? The person says, listen, I'm a member of Koinonia. I love Jesus and I love apostle. Just give me anything, whether it's razor blade, whether it's a knife, you just allow me with the heart of your loved one and watch what I will do. How many of you will do that? And yet you are people of faith incompetence this is what has separated nations to be called third world and first world are we together now this is what has separated people into cadres of possibilities listen if you are a man of God and you are not competent I, 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 I hate to sound arrogant but I will tell you human beings are intelligent nobody will come to submit themselves to any spiritual leadership where they know that value will not be dispensed that is intelligently communicated and is life applicable there must be a point of application as far as dispensing knowledge is concerned everybody wants to be around a leader they know and trust not just in terms of sincerity of heart but in terms of capacity to deliver the bible calls it sufficiency make up your mind that you will stop celebrating being a local champion and get back to your drawing board and make sure that you zoom on one thing and obtain grace from god to be competent you would have driven shame and reproach including poverty from your life you're following me say amen. amen apostle I can cook it's just that Christians don't like giving me food be honest with yourself are you right on that is it true should we believe you that you can do what you can do competently and I hope you know when I talk about competence I'm stretching you to use a global bar and a global reference because you see respectfully speaking we come from backgrounds that have celebrated mediocrity for many years and so even at your point of deficiency you are still a champion there are there are there are regions where you do not necessarily need to do anything you are still a champion but Jesus is charging us and calling on us that if you truly want to experience the supplies of the kingdom then you must value this capital called competence number three what is the third capital that buys money is called credibility or a good name please write it down credibility slash a good name Proverbs chapter 22 and verse 1 the third capital that buys money watch what the Bible says a good name is rather to be chosen than what look at this so he's saying if you are given the option whether as a preacher whether as a businessman as a family man you are given an opportunity here is a good name and here is riches great riches the Bible gives you counsel it says do not go near great riches choose a good name do you know what a good name is credibility 
credibility i submit to you there are people right now who are living on a good name and their children's children it does not matter the economic condition a good name has become like a garrison protecting them against shame are we together there are people who have been given jobs today in truth not necessarily because of what they studied or their level of competence a good name credibility and our world today especially among believers we do not place value on credibility every leader here knows that credibility counts and credibility has a very tremendous power of blessing people beyond you yourself there are children today who will never beg because they are working on a good name no wonder names are so powerful Jesus gave us his name he didn't just give us his life he gave us his name he said in my name every time you see demons don't just recite memory verses as wonderful as that is make sure that all you do use my name they don't have respect for any other thing else but the name the name of Jesus we call that name sometimes with revelation sometimes out of emotions and we watch with shock and wonder sometimes the way demons tremble the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus be healed in the name of Jesus be lifted in the name of Jesus let doors be open and we watch from one point you call on the name of Jesus and watch what happens he said silver and gold I do not have but such as I have I have true riches I may not have the money to give you to go to the hospital but I have what can even buy you health in the name of Jesus of Nazareth he said rise up and walk and the Bible says the man was still watching and he held him he said you do not know the power of the office I just invoked I've had the opportunity to enjoy the leverage of you know great names and it is my prayer that God it will please God that someday my name and even the name of this ministry will be a leverage for someone that someone will be able to use it and it will still be a blessing that is not only the name of Jesus is most powerful but your name should also be powerful there are people even in death their names can open doors even in death how come you have this surname oh I'm the great grandchild of this this man come and they absorb them immediately credibility credibility there are people who never had access to vast cash but they 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 they, they live a life of integrity and they live a life of credibility anybody can vouch for them please write it down capital number three that buys money is a good name there are people today who will be going around looking for loans I'm looking for 1 million 10 million 100 million 1 billion for this and someone would just say listen for the sake of the person that you are or for the sake of the person that you know that name I'm not going to borrow you I will give it to you may your name be a leverage Amen. and let me tell you the truth everyone here you are a leader you are a parent you have somebody a subordinate of some sort under you you have a responsibility of working to make your life credible enough that your name the name of your organization the name of your church the name of whatever platform God has given you that it becomes so credible when in the secular when we mention names I don't want to mention names of businesses but there are all kinds of brands across the globe is that true and do you know that when you buy certain products for instance my phone here most times what you buy are names and logos not necessarily the products even if I put an original product for you and you check you want to check the name first if there's no name there even if it was genuine you will throw it back and say I did not find the name we spend millions and billions for names we wear names and we feel good wearing names names can be worn names can be driven names can be used names can be eaten we eat names we drive names we sing names we use names and some of those people are dead abel though dead yet speaketh abel though dead yet speaketh Are we together 
If I meet someone right now and tells me I'm a member of the Bahamas Faith Ministries International or I'm related to late Dr. Miles Munro, chances are excellent that immediately I will be endeared to them because it is a name that brings memory of impact, selfless service. My life, that man was used by God to set a straight compass towards a victorious life for me. Names are powerful. I have taught you here that names can be padlocks and they can be keys. It is your, it's your choice to choose. Your name can be a padlock and lock even open doors against your children and your children's children. Or your name can be a key. It is my prayer that it not only becomes a key, that it becomes a lift. That men, the Bible says the name of the Lord is a strong tower. That the righteous man runneth to it and is safe. Are we together? So number three, credibility. For those of you who think he does not care, I will do anything for money, it does not matter. The most important thing is I have money. If you have money and you lose credibility, it was a bad bargain. Let me repeat myself. If you have to give up credibility and a good name for money, you've not only disobeyed scripture, you've done your destiny evil. i rather remain poor in terms of bankruptcy of cash and have a good name somebody will be sensible enough through the sojourn of my life to know the value of a good name and they will bring me back to the table of the great say a good name man of god a good name is worth fighting for businessman a good name is worth fighting for corporations fight and invest millions and billions of dollars to brand their name they can go hiding things and packaging things because they know that the, their unique selling point is their name not if whether the value is actually worth you know that whole pursuit once they have a good name look at the kind of investment jesus put on his name Wherefore God had so highly exalted him. What did God give Jesus? A name. Not just a throne. The throne was always there before he came to the earth. But now he sat on that throne with a name. And here's what the Bible says. That at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow of things in heaven. Help me. Of things in the earth and of things under the earth. That is the power of a name. You can have a bad name. Nobody names their children Lucifer, Jezebel, and all those kinds of things. Maybe there may be people, but generally, nobody will name his child Satan or Apollyon or Abaddon. Nobody names his child Mammon. You know, all these kinds of things. These are all names. And yet, nobody wants to name his child that way. To the point that people grow up and change their names. Thank my parents for doing the best that they do, you may say. But this name they gave me, that means Satan, that means evil spirit, I will change it. Will you ever give your child a name, Beelzebub? Just because you say it's in the Bible? No. Abaddon, Apollyon, no. Or you call your child unclean spirit, or something of that sort. You will never do that. Please look at me. Many people in search for money have thrown away good names. Many people in search for mundane things, cars, houses, political positions, business positions, all kinds of physical influences have thrown away names. I'm teaching you by the spirit of the living God tonight, it is better to lose money and gain that name. If you lose money, and you gain a name if you lose membership dear man of god and you gain names a good name if you lose you know whatever it is that you lose and you have a good name you have still sustained the capital that can still make you relevant i hope you know that this capital does not just buy naira and kobo and dollars when we talk about i just use money to represent it can buy health it can buy relevance influence whatever it is can we continue number four the fourth capital that buys money or anything of value upon the earth is called light the fourth capital is called light please put in bracket knowledge 
wisdom and understanding. Light. Light. Proverbs chapter 23. Proverbs 24, 3 and 4. Proverbs 24, 3 and 4. Please give it to us. Through wisdom is an house builder. Give us amplified, please. Let's put perspective to this. Amplified through skillful and godly wisdom. Look at it. A house, a life, a home, a family built. And by understanding, the Bible says, it is established on sound and good foundation. Uh -huh. Verse 4. It says, and by knowledge shall its chambers of every area be filled with all precious and pleasant riches. Is it in your Bible there? That there is a relationship between knowledge, wisdom, understanding, and riches. Pleasant riches. Light. When God wants to help a man and make you rich, he does not just give you a job. He does not just give you a business idea. He does not just give you an investment idea. Ladies and gentlemen, please listen. All these things have their place, but in order of priority, he floods you with light. The moment God gives you light, he's making you wealthy. That means every koinonia service as you come here, you must have that mentality that you are living wealthier. But you're saying, Apostle, my ATM is not, you know, the values are not increasing. My pocket still sounds empty. Now you have in spiritual intelligence to know that light can buy money. Light can buy influence. Light can buy a space of relevance and honor for you in life and destiny. Light. The entrance of thy word giveth light and even understanding to the simple. Is someone learning? No wonder you talk to the Lord about increase. Lord, I want to pay the school fees of my children. And God leads you to materials. You know, years ago, many, many years ago, as I began to take my life and my destiny serious, I went to buy a few books, even books on finance, uh, from a few people that I thought knew what they were saying. And I began to read the books and I closed them because I was not happy. All that I was seeing in the books were mindsets, character traits. I said, these guys are lying. What are you doing? Go straight to the point. What is all this behave well, greet, be cautious. Then they will fill the book with stories and all kinds of examples. I said, this is what I wasted my money for. How foolish I was. They were really giving their secrets. Light. But we're throwing away light because we were looking for Naira and Kobo. Like many of you have thrown, you know. If they say there's some money that is given somewhere at any secretariat at all. Be there tomorrow 6 o'clock. 100,000 or 1 million, you just come stand on the queue. Many people will be there from 2. And they would stand there. And there's nothing wrong, I appreciate your zeal. You stand there from 2 and not mind at all. But a moment to sit down and feast upon the light of scripture. People begin to say, is this thing really necessary? In him was light. And that light was the life of man. So he could look at a fish and say, produce coin. Take away shame from us. He could look at a sea that had no fish. True riches were coming there. So he looks at a sea and commands fish to appear. And saves the disciples do you know the kind of prosperity they would have had from selling that fish? The capital that buys money. Light. Listen, the Bible says to buy the truth. I did that teaching. I've not done it here, but I did it in Takoradi in Ghana. I hope one day God will grant me the grace to teach it here. Buy the truth. He never said look for the truth. The truth is available, but it comes at a cost. Buy the truth. He says, and it, when you have it, sell it not. That means somebody will come to try to bargain with you, to give you money and say, give me truth. Say, tell the person you're a bad businessman. Go away. I will keep my truth. Buy the truth and sell it not. Light. From today, I want you to become a student of light. And that every time light is coming, for instance, just knowing the light that honor can open doors 
and honor dishonor can close doors do you know that light my, i have received without exaggeration hundreds and now in total maybe thousands of text messages from people saying apostle you taught me on the law of honor and just that law alone is why i have my job today just that law alone is why my siblings have been able to you know have this and that light is powerful light is powerful you keep light and you keep money. Rush for light. Leave money. You will soon find out that the money itself is looking for where light is so that it will stay there. Shout light. When you go back home, thank God for a job. I will pray for you to get a job. Thank God for business ideas. But ladies and gentlemen, I'm showing you the reason why we continue to recycle frustrations. Because for many of us, we think I'm tired of this situation. What I need is a job or business or some investment capital somewhere. No, this is the real capital you need. Stop frowning at your uncle. Stop frowning at everybody to say, wicked man, this man has money. I begged him to give me one million naira and I will never need money in my life again. He laughed at you and gave you a book and you insulted him. He loved you too much to limit you by giving you one million and he gave you a book. We stand upon the knowledge, the wisdom and the understanding that we have. I can tell you by the integrity of scripture and with all humility, show me a career of light, life applicable light. I show you a man who has way poverty, shame and mediocrity goodbye. It will. <laughs> Number five, let's rush. If you are learning, say amen. The fifth capital that buys money is called favor. Mm. True riches. When God wants to make you wealthy, he helps you access the dynamics that brings favor. Proverbs 22 and verse 1, the B part. Let's read together. In fact, let's read everything, but the emphasis is the B part. Ready? One to read. A good name is rather to be chosen than great riches number two and loving favor rather than silver and gold is that in your bible look up please ladies will know this better than the men most men don't know how expensive gold and silver is but you see our women know very very well some of you are already smiling you are saying ah apostle you can trust me i can even tell you the current price of gold jewelry and original i know original and I don't know what else they are called, but we know there's original in the equation. It says loving favor should be desired than silver and gold. Please look at me. I want you to be very honest, especially in this time of need. If they drop silver or gold, gold chain, gold earring, gold everything, even gold idol, if they drop it here, are we together? And ask and drop favor here. And ask people, look, pick it. Someone will pick even is the idol that is even bigger. You say, after all, Jesus said, give thanks. I will break it and turn it into the face of Jesus. I will meet a goldsmith somewhere in Kano or Dubai. They will break it for me and turn it into or oh, the cross at least. If I'm not sure what the face of Jesus is, at least I know how the cross looks. Let it be a gold cross that glorifies Jesus and is still an investment for me. But the Bible says, if you are given that option, please look at me, and you are given favor, he said, ignore it. Even find gold. Now, I want you to see how scripture thinks that a man should desire favor above silver and gold. What does that mean? It means then that in the mind of God, favor is by far greater than gold and silver. I have taught extensively on favor and I'm hoping that in the name of Jesus someone would have gotten it by now if not may tonight be the night where you finally get it Amen. Exodus 3 21 I will show you this scripture for as many times as you would require until you see the power that is contained in accessing favor and I will give these people 
even koinonia, favor, in the sight of the Egyptians. It says, and it shall come to pass that when ye go, as you sojourn through your life, ye shall not go empty. Are you seeing that emptiness is proof of the absence of favor? Empty, he never said emptiness of the pocket or emptiness of the bank account. All kinds of emptiness can be traceable to the absence and the bankruptcy of favor. So when God wants to help you, when you bow your knees and say, Lord, change my financial status. Lord, change this issue of shame and mediocrity in my family. Here comes favor. And as favor comes, you must embrace it. Do you know, there are people who have been in this city, not to offend you, but there are people who have been in this city for decades. They've not been able to have access to one piece of land or one house. And yet there are people who have come and through the instrumentality of favor, God has gallantly settled them structurally. That's what favor can do. Psalm 44 and verse 3. They got not the land in possession, my Bible says, by their own sword. It says, neither did their own arm save them, but thy right hand, thine arm, and the light of thy countenance, because thou hadst a favor. Please look at me. I'm not downplaying your monthly pay, but let me just use for an example. Even if you are working for a billionaire in dollars, if your salary is, say, $1,000, you're not going to get more easily. The fact that he's a billionaire does not mean he will give you $1 million or 500000 That is your salary. It's fixed. You agree. If you have a provision where you are given other benefits outside of your core salary, that's fine. But you see, the thing about favor is that the financial expression of favor purely depends listen carefully it depends on the manifestation of the grace of God that compels that person to give to you somebody can give you the equivalent of a million dollars in cash or in time simply because they are responding to favor break that into your salary how many years is that favor is powerful it's an accelerator of destinies Somebody can manifest favor by giving you a land. Another person can give you a house. Another person can give you a furnished house. It's, it's not a call for laziness. Your labor is to make sure that that, true, that capital is on your head. It's at work in your life. And don't you say that these kinds of blessings are only for preachers. It's a lie. Apostle, nobody knows me. I'm not preaching in any crusade so nobody can give me a car or a house it's not true what is on your head can fish out blessings from anywhere and it will gravitate towards your life I want you to believe me on this are we together say favor, favor. shout it like you desire it favor. Hmm. when I found the force of favor and I saw the power of favor I prayed it, I cried it, I consistently walk in keeping with the things that keep favor in my life and keep favor in this ministry. And I submit to you without any sense of um, pride that I have an idea of what the favor of God looks like. And this is why every time I pray for people, you know, years ago, it became a concern for me. And I, I remember even challenging my people. There are many graces that God has placed upon my life. And I'm honored and grateful for it. But it seemed like the hardest of the graces to receive has been this favor. Many people have received, whether the miraculous, this, very easily. But for some reason, and I went to the Lord in prayer. I said, Lord, why is it that this thing is very hard? It's not supposed to be, I have prayed, I have laid both hands on people. What is really stopping people from stepping into it? You see, because favor is a product of many things. There are many factors that have to play themselves together. Listen to my teachings on favor. This grace called favor. Find it and camp around it and listen your way out of shame. Listen your way out of emptiness. Man of God. Knowledge is important. I, have, I just spoke about it being one of those capital. But let me submit to you, in these times of need, these perilous times, you will need the favor 
that grace must be functional in your life that becomes your only bailout out of shame even financial shame do you know that a whole corporation can carry that grace for favor you know that yes a ministry can carry that grace for favor when you carry the grace for favor you will see how childish manipulation looks like it is totally unnecessary ah, Lord let your favor not depart from this house let your favor not depart from our lives in the name of Jesus let your favor not depart from our businesses let it not depart from our homes yes when the favor of God is upon a man your life becomes an absolute wonder a wonder from a global scale I hope that God will grant us a grace maybe after the conference I hope we'll have the opportunity to tell you the things that God has done it is it is simply incredible what God has done just preparing for a UK conference just a few weeks and and I can I can I can only I can only begin to I can just tell you glory to God let's just leave it there so don't think this is just a Nigerian thing where Nigeria favor has value everywhere everywhere you are in America, you are in the Caribbean, you are somewhere in the northern part of Nigeria, middle belt here. Don't think favor is just needed in Abuja because those who have money are in Abuja or Lagos or Port Harcourt. It's not true. Everywhere there are men, favor applies. Everywhere. Hallelujah. Incredible manifestation of God's favor already. Just preparing for this conference. These are things that you would almost think they are lies or exaggerations, but by the power of God. And we know that this is only a tip of the iceberg of the mighty things that God is going to be doing. And let me use the opportunity and well, right now, you know, the whole, um, the number has been exhausted sadly, so we've had to close down everything. But, but then I believe that we'll still find a way. So you are UK around Europe, make sure your heart is opened that as an opportunity is given be part of this conference make sure that you bring in all your people if you need to fly from around the world it is truly going to be an encounter of a lifetime hallelujah and i didn't tell you i'll be joined by my dear friend and brother pastor nathaniel bassi <laughs> hallelujah interesting i didn't even know that the media had done something like that praise god and i have several friends ministers of the gospel from this nation from across the globe i mean several people a dear pastor friend told me he said listen i have a conference somewhere but apostle i'm flying down we believe there is a revival it's like a tsunami what god is bringing over you all. hallelujah so let's get back to our discussion praise the name of the lord favor you need it you need it in your life. You need it in your ministry, dear preacher. You need it in your family. Otherwise, you're going to live a life of anger and frustration. You will find out that things don't seem to work out. But in the name of Jesus, as you are seated under this anointing, I stand and invoke the power that has helped many to rise from rags to riches with integrity that has helped many to rise from families where their roofs were leaking to now building homes and building churches for people may that grace for favor rest upon you i say it again may that grace for favor rest upon you rest upon your ministry rest upon your business in the name of jesus christ please be seated number six true riches the capital that buys money are you ready for number six relationships i won't say much there because i have taught you relationships i've told you i've told you here that relationships are currencies remember that anything money can buy relationships can even buy it better that is true if you use money to pay for everything in your life you are poor no there are many receipts in your life that should be paid by relationships paid by favor paid by skill it is not only paid by cash genesis chapter 12 1 to 5 
Let's hurry up. Genesis 12, 1 to 5. Follow the story carefully. Now the Lord had said to Abraham, Get thee out of thy country from thy kindred, thy father's house, unto a land that I would show you too. It says, And I will make of thee a great nation. I will bless thee and make thy name great. And thou shalt be a blessing. Verse 3. And I will bless them that bless thee and curse him that curseth thee. And in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Verse 4, it says, So Abraham departed as the Lord had spoken unto him, and Lot went with him. I like this. Lot was not there when the promise was given, but Lot decided to connect himself to a man who was carrying the blessing and carrying prophecy. Are we together? The Bible says Abraham was 70 and 5 years old when he departed out of Haram. The last verse, then we jump to 13. And Abraham took Sarai his wife and Lot his brother's son and all their substance that they had gathered and the souls that they had gotten in Haran and they went forth to go into the land of Canaan and into the land of Canaan they came remember the Bible says he took Lot Lot went alone empty-handed but watch the power of relationships 13 and verse 1 13 and verse 1 chapter 13 now Abraham went up out of Egypt he and his wife and all that he had and the bible says lot with him still going with him into the south too and abraham was very rich if i were setting an exams i would tell you to list which of these two riches was responsible for cattle silver and gold hmm. <laughs> ah, i'm enjoying myself here praise god anyway Abraham was very rich. We don't know what he did, but we know what he carried. He was rich in cattle, in silver, and in gold. Verse 3. And he went on his journeys from the south even to Bethel, unto the place where his tent had been at the beginning, between Bethel and Ai. Verse 4, watch this. Unto the place of the altar which he had made there at the first. And there Abraham called upon the name. What did he call upon? Hmm. Verse 5. And Lot also, which went with Abraham, carried the things that he carried and started having flocks and herds and tents. Can you imagine that? Lot went empty-handed, but he noted that certain things were following Abraham. I'm sure somewhere along the lines he would have said, Abraham, can you please, whatever it is that you're transacting in the realm of the spirit that is producing cattle and silver and gold, can it also come upon me? And Lot started reproducing these physical results. When we read further, you will see that to a point that there was conflict and the conflict was simply because of the abundance of possessions. In fact, let's touch verse 6. Genesis 13, 6. And the land was not able to bear them. Why? That they might be dwell together for their substance, not for his substance. Lord had become so wealthy, you would not even know who blessed who. So that they could not dwell together relationships are powerful they are advantageous connections i will continue to pray for you and i'll continue to encourage you to discern the value of relationships as far as programming a life of greatness a life of wealth anybody especially in this day who ignores strategic relationships has signed up for a life of poverty and pain and failure believe me as a man of God, no matter how anointed you are, you cannot do it alone. As a businessman, no matter how skilled you are, you cannot do it alone. Remember, I've not just told you one. I've told you now six. You can have one and you can have a few things around your life. But when you want to walk in the richness, the abundance of the blessing of the Lord, you need all seven. And that includes relationships. There are many of us here who have not been taught the value of relationships. 
You have thrown every good person out of your life in search for money. You have thrown every good person out of your life in search for whatever it is. It's time to sit down and rethink and bring valuable relationships into your life. Valuable is the key word. Valuable relationships. Because like I've taught you here, if Jonah is in your boat, you will not be prosperous. You will lose, even though Jonah is not a fake prophet. But if Jesus is in your boat, hallelujah, glory be to God. In fact, Jesus is so powerful that even if he's not in your boat, if he's just by the seaside, you will still catch fish. Are we together? My life today has been enhanced by quality relationships, very strategic relationships, and bless God for all the strategic relationships that he's placed in my life, placed in this ministry, and that includes you. May God bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. Yes, don't be afraid. It's true. Except you think you are not a blessing. Say, I'm a blessing. Forget about what, who told you. Just say, I'm a blessing. Yes. Make up your mind that you are not a curse. In the name of Jesus, I'm not a curse. Doesn't matter what was told me in the office. Doesn't matter what my spouse told me. Doesn't matter what my children or my parents told me. I believe the report of the Lord. It says, in thee. And the Bible says, Galatians 3.29, that if ye be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. That means I am a partaker of everything that was told Abraham. That in me, Joshua Selman, and even in Koinonia, all the nations of the earth, the families of the earth be blessed. That's why he can send us to Europe. He can send us to the US. He can send us to Canada, to Africa, everywhere. And we go with joy, knowing that we have come. He said, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. One more time, say, I am a blessing. L listen, let it affect you. Let it alter your thinking. Don't look at yourself as a non-entity and as an extra luggage in people's lives, hoping and scrounging for acceptance. That anybody who embraces their hands to bring you into their life, they've brought a gift, not a human being. See that? That you are such a blessing that when God wants to help men, he sends you there. May you be such a person in the name of Jesus Christ. That a business is going down and God wants to introduce an altar that represents a blessing. He will compel them to give you a job, no matter what the job is. And you step into that place and within one year, they come out of shame. You become like the ark of God, even in the house of Obed-Edom. Say it one more time, I am a blessing. Apostle, but I cannot speak English. That's not what I'm asking you to say. Uh -uh. Apostle, I don't think I'm good enough. I don't think I'm fine enough. I don't think I'm preacher enough. That's not what I'm asking you. Say, I am a blessing. Yes, sir. I have indoctrinated myself to believe that I am a blessing. I truly believe that I'm a blessing to my world, that I'm a blessing to Koinonia, that I'm a blessing to all those God has sent me to and will send me to. You must carry that mentality. It's not about being arrogant. It's about being certain and confident. I am a blessing. Everything around me drips the blessing of heaven. I shake you and greet you. Your life will not be the same. We have an opportunity to converse. Your life will not be the same. Because it says, he that cometh from above is above all. I come to your church. It will never be the same. I come to your nation. It will never be the same. That is the truth. You see, when you understand the power of what you are bringing, listen, don't just be relationship conscious, be blessing conscious that I have a role. You know, I have taught you. You may not have a technical role in that relationship, but you can bring spiritual value. Look what happened to our lives when we opened up to this relationship called Jesus. We brought Jesus into our lives and he literally turned everything around. Look at the Holy Spirit. Look at your relationship with the word. Look at your relationship with the brethren. Listen, let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, when you are counting your assets, count relationship first before houses. 
when you are counting your assets count relationships first before houses don't tell me i have a house in america congratulations but that's not enough one policy can take that house away from you i hope you know that don't say i have a house in maitama i have a house in guzape congratulations don't say i have a house in banana island list all the places you think are choice places they are still land a house cannot hug a house cannot cry with you but there are men who are greater than estates there are men who are even greater than nations when they looked at the womb of the woman they said she has two nations not two babies not two children honestly listen let me tell you it is my prayer for you go and listen to my message on destiny help us i'm not talking about that tonight for time but i'm praying for you that god will bring to your life number one divine connectors I'm praying that my God will bring to your life men of influence. This is the world of men. And there are discussions that only happen between men of influence. If you have not attained onto a certain level of, of social status, whether you, whether you say people don't like you, you will not have a voice there. And so you would need people who God has elevated and given that level of influence to advocate for you and happier you if God has connected you to men of influence. There are many of us here, you are gifted people, but there is nobody who is of influence who can speak for you because you have ignored the power of influence. Can I tell you, influence is a powerful weapon. Very powerful weapon. One person can just write, even on a little piece of paper, kindly consider him and sign his signature, and that's it. He said, go and give it to this person. And while they are insulting you, including the one who will receive it, I, you are a stupid person. He says, sir, please. And he looks at it. That's influence for you. Where did you be this guy? Oh, he's my uncle. Your uncle? sit down what did you say you want that's it influence is powerful i'm praying again may god bring men of influence in your life <laughs> say amen oh may god bring men of influence in your life in the name of jesus christ listen can i tell you in the world of men influence can open doors honestly somebody can stop you from going to prison Somebody can stop you from get all kinds of things. That it is clear that defeat is imminent. But God can use men. And he can say, remember those days. I bring to your memory. Let the business not go down. Let them have this. And that's it. And while that discussion is happening, you may not even be there. And these are the kinds of teachings that believers need to hear. In addition to prayer and fasting, you must receive spiritual intelligence to know how the cosmos works. It is the reason why I'm not only praying that God will bring such people, but that you too will rise to become a person of influence. In the name of Jesus Christ. And then remember number three, destiny help us. Gifted men. Oh, corporations, you need this. Gifted people will save you from all kinds of financial leakages. When you find a combination of Daniel, Bezalel, and Joseph in your organization, it cannot go down. Combine such people, then add Esther there, then add Elijah somewhere. Ah. Who again? Gideon. Imagine you have a staff structure made of Gideon, Esther, Elijah, Abba, Joseph, Daniel. Show me the devil that brings that ministry down. Show me the devil that brings that organization down. What Esther cannot do, Elijah is waiting. And what Elijah cannot do, Joseph is waiting. Let me tell you the truth. Gifted people are a real blessing. Do you know why Jesus prayed all night to choose disciples? What is so special about choosing disciples that he had to pray? Because the mission of the church was at the mercy of the people he would select. You are a CEO here. 
it takes more than just throwing open an interview no while you do the interview go back and hold hands with your wife and some of your core leaders who are believers I want to assume that your business runs on Christian values not necessarily fanatism but values that honor faith begin to pray Lord bring strategic people here and you will find somebody who the grandmother prophesied the grace upon his life that anywhere you go you will make the trees there to grow and that person God just smuggles that person to your company and someone just said, I like this person I will come back I will start doing business with you you will you cannot imagine the silly reasons why God use why people lift others up someone can just say I like your name that's it I like your name and then you become the Nigerian director of that company I like your name and then you are given an additional one year salary as a gift I like your name that's what God can do may it happen for you Apostle, I don't have a job. Use the time to get relationships. And let me tell you this. Don't go around throwing away poor people and saying, Apostle has taught us. And if you don't have anything, don't near my life. I've suffered. Don't, don't do that. You act like that. Listen, the person whose star you have seen is by far less than the person who is rising. You have seen John the Baptist, but do you know he's forerunning Jesus? Don't concentrate on John the Baptist and ignore Jesus. Then sooner or later, John will tell you himself that I may decrease. You are in trouble. <laughs> are we together? Some of you see our little children here. You see these children coming to run up and down. And you see me hugging them. They are pulling my ears and saying, come and listen. Just obey them and listen. Because you'll be surprised that's a CEO there. That's another apostle there that these children in the next few years will be teaching and will sit down and be taking notes and say, my goodness, with all our study of scripture, we didn't see this. Hallelujah. Relationships. For some of you, do you know that God sent you to Koinonia here? Not just to come and listen to apostle. Be mindful. You are sitting down near someone by your left and right now. Apostle, but the person does not look rich. That's exactly what I'm trying to deliver you from concluding on people we're teaching true riches don't forget what we're dealing with can i tell you some of the most prosperous people who will come around you do not carry a semblance of prosperity they are too serious thinking about nations that some of them sometimes even to a fault they don't care so much about whatever appearance or whatever it is they are rich they are rich as simple as that be nice to people oh turn and tell your neighbor god bless you that courtesy God bless you, sir. Ah, you said, you said, God bless you so much. See me after service. And you'll be like, who is this man saying I should see him? Until you find out who is saying that. And you'll see that God has used one person to wipe the tears. Of not only your family, a whole generation's tears can be wiped. Listen, God's instrument still remains men. He will always bless men through men. Lift men through men. And then the last of the four that I taught you when it had to do with destiny helpers are burden bearers. Oh, I'm praying that in all you're getting, may you have burden bearers. Because you see, everybody who is on his way to the throne must get to the cross one day. I didn't say may, must. Woe betides a man who is alone when you are carrying the cross. The assignment of burden bearers is not to move you forward, it's to stop you from going backward. These are the men who can pray with you in secret and say, man of God, I know that your ministry needs 10 billion right now. I may not have the physical cash, but I can pray with you. If there's no one like that in your life, start praying. Start praying that God will bring such people. Are we together? Ask every great man, whether in business, in ministry, they usually will have, even if it's one person, somebody at the back of their life, at the back of who they can be naked and unashamed with. And they can come and say, listen, I have my fears and my frustrations. I was listening to a great man of God speak and he was talking about a few people in his life who he can just come and cry to. 
and sometimes this is a bold man but he can cry to them and say look i'm tired and i'm frustrated in ministry and some of them are his members and they will stand by him and say look you will make it and then come and sit down on sunday as if they don't know anything may god send those kinds of people to your life as powerful as jesus is on his way to Golgotha as I'm saying it now some of you I'm sure I, I, I'm not bringing bad memories but there are many of you if you only had a burden bearer you would not have gone through the things you are going through your organization helped many people but the day they were in need for help not even the banks turned their faces to you and everybody just left you can you imagine even the father Turned his face away from Jesus and yet Mary said I would die here John said I would die with you here I am your disciple I will not lie Joseph of Ari um, what's his name Simon of Cyrene I may not amount to much but I can carry the cross for you burden bearers are powerful people they will come and cry with you you lost your son I may not be a prayer warrior but put a mat for me around your veranda. I will be with you for the next one week in this house. Until you eat, I will not eat. I'm saying it again. May my God send such people to your life. Can I tell you, listen, by reason of what I do, I've had the honor and the privilege of weeping with people, families through their funerals. And there seem to, according to the law of time and chance, I wish that I would, I would tell you this would not happen. But a day will come in your life personally, corporately and otherwise, where you will be at your downtime. And at that point, you don't need, you need people who can look at you and believe in you and cry with you. Do you know there are many people today, even politicians, for years they poured their lives to people and the moment they either lose an election or lose something, everybody just backs up from them. When God wants to help you, he will bring you gifts. I don't have money now. I lost my business, I lost my job, but somebody will stand with you and say, you didn't lose too much. You have Jesus and you have me. And you say, well, no, just go. I'm already a failure. He said, that means we are failures together because I'm not only standing with you, we will cry with you. Are you learning now? Yes. Look at what the disciples did for the gospel. They had opportunities to renounce Christ and go free. But many of them, go and read how the disciples died. Some of them were turned upside down. Some of them went through all kinds of things. Men like John were thrown into boiling hot oil. It's just that he could not die. That's why they banished him to the Isle of Patmos. And yet for their faith, the memory of their relationship with Jesus, they could not stand to denounce him. Many of us here right now, our hearts have been broken and, and, and shattered to pieces because of the betrayal, the disappointment of men. And some of them sadly may have been people you poured your heart and your all in. Am I right on that? Some of them maybe they were house helps. Some of them were people maybe you raised and trained in school. Some of them are people you did all kinds of things. That's human beings for you. But the good news is that there, are, there will always be a few people as I'll always tell you, my first prayer is may you be one of such people who can be a burden bearer for others. Then may God bring burden bearers to you. In the name of Jesus. I remember many years ago in Zaria, one of my dear leaders, precious lady, I loved her so much. I mean, very vibrant, zealous lady. I was counseling and I think preparing the next day would be service. And then she quickly ran to a particular state, preparing for a miracle service, you know, happy, praying that God will visit his people. And all of a sudden, I get this call, repeated call, and I take an excuse and run outside. And then they tell me that this, my precious, precious, precious lady had just had an accident. They had to manage it to the family to say they are still working, but she had passed on. And they told me, that, I said, God, I went on a retreat immediately. I said, did I not see well? What happened? Have I backslidden? Is it my vision? What happened that my eyes could not see this? I remember allocating some of the heads of department to that department to help manage it. I went before the Lord and I cried. 
I said, Lord, this is not, you have, you have called us to be life-giving spirits. Why should this happen? And I prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed and I made up my mind. I said, since this lady will not come back to life, let me do the best that I can at least to go and see her family. I traveled down to, I think, Kogi State and to go and see her mom. The mom was so encouraged and said, Apostle, with all your schedules, I said, no, your daughter loved the Lord and she served in this ministry. And the least we can do is to come and support you. Some of you have not been there for anybody. Anybody. You hear that someone has died, you just send a text. He's in heaven, cheer up. No. You, you don't behave that way. Are we together? Let me have your attention. Remember, the house of God is a place of training. Don't do that to people. And don't start saying things like, "Long, are you not a believer? You know, pray, let him come back. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. To comfort those who mourn in Zion. There are times that even Jesus can weep. And I'm saying it not just in this ministry, but when you find people crying, be that voice of comfort. Stand by them if you can. Cry with them if you can. Support them if you can. Are we together? It's possible that there are people right now who are in pains. Maybe some of you, as you are watching me, you've lost your loved ones, you've lost your job, you've lost something in your life. I'm praying that somebody will be brought by God in your life, unselfish people, sincere people who can call you and say, have you eaten today? Are you fine? Do you have the strength? Oh, rain came and washed our church. I'm about to give up ministry. And the man says, no way, no way. Even if it means me going to your church for the next three weeks to be preaching, to keep the congregation together, I will do it for you. True riches. This is one of the most powerful capital. The, num the easiest way I know to prosper is to be connected to strategic relationships. There are people today, right now, your prosperity is truly not in your business. Your prosperity is truly not in your job. Your prosperity is in a relationship somewhere. Man of God, hear me. God can bring one sincere person who has been helped by God and he will tell you, my assignment is not only to stand by the ministry, but to stand by you as a person. My assignment is to make sure that while you serve God, your children do not beg for bread. There are many people in the body of Christ who are standing strong today. It is not just because they are all wise. It is because God connected strategic people. They cough and those friends and partners will buy them pharmacies not just drugs and say go and choose by yourself we want to see you happy but there are many of us here you pay for everything if you don't get one month salary you are in trouble because you don't have any relationship that is strategic enough now the assignment is not to say i'm everybody's friend come demon speak no 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 it may just be one person who believes in you who loves you you now see why credibility is important because credibility can help you earn quality relationships somebody must trust you enough and i'm praying for you in the name of jesus the son of the living god may somebody believe in you enough to invest their lives to invest their resources to invest their reputation and their credibility in the name of jesus christ man of god you can be anointed but alone, you may not be able to do much. I was so blessed and encouraged when my dear friends in ministry began to call and say, Apostle, you are going to see us in Manchester. We're coming to support you. We believe in what you're doing. We're standing with you, standing by you. Please, whatever you wa want us to do, we're here available. And I said, listen, these guys did not have to do this. They have their own busy schedules all across the, the world. That is the power of relationships. Are we together? Number seven, the anointing. Deuteronomy 8.18, with respect to the blessing of the Lord and prosperity, there is what the Bible calls the power to get wealth. The power, the anointing, the unction to get wealth. True riches, if you have been unfaithful with unrighteous mammon, who will commit to you? 
these true riches, the anointing. It says that God can give men the power to get wealth. God can give men the power to get wealth. Please look at me. The anointing is a profound spiritual asset. Profound spiritual asset. The anointing can translate to financial prosperity. In fact, the anointing is an enhancer of all the other six capitals. The anointing enhances relationships, enhances favor, enhances light, enhances credibility and a good report. The anointing enhances competence and the anointing enhances meekness. Please look at me. Everybody you see who is sustainably wealthy, I submit to you, check their lives from the lens of what I have taught you. You will see some or more of these elements. These are the elements that have produced the longevity of wealth, longevity of financial resources, among many other material blessings. When the Lord taught me this, it changed my life forever. So the blind pursuit for money or the blind pursuit for cars and houses and material things, you can set them as honest goals, but in order of priority, recall the examples that I gave you here that on one hand there are products that you desire to have everything that is needed for your life clothes whatever it is physical things and that money is what will help you buy this whatever money means based on your civilization but that there is another kind of capital spiritual in context yet potent and powerful the bible calls it true riches so when you say you are prosperous, I hope you don't just mean my business is doing well. When you say you are prosperous, I hope you don't just mean I have a good job or multiple jobs in waiting. When you say you are prosperous, I hope you don't just mean I have a few dollars or pounds or naira in the bank account. When you say you are prosperous, I hope you don't just mean I have a few real estate somewhere or some shares with some company. When you say you are prosperous, you mean I have a meek heart, genuinely meek. Are we together? When you say you are prosperous, you are saying that I have made up my mind to be competent as a culture. When you say you are prosperous, I have made up my mind to value credibility, integrity, and a good name, even more than business and jobs. When you say you are prosperous, you mean that I remain a student of light, searching for wisdom searching for understanding searching for knowledge when you say i am prosperous you mean that i am one who will do all it takes under god for favor to remain at work in my life and to multiply upon my life and when you say i am prosperous it means i am one who has mastered the art of building strategic destiny relationships that translate into my blessing all wise finally when you say i am prosperous you are saying i have placed value on the ministry of the holy spirit to the point where i have received a rich investment of his anointing upon my life can we pray now jesus said if you have been unfaithful with unrighteous mammon he says who shall commit to you the true riches please stand up on your feet let's minimize moving around we're about to have some time to pray we look to Yahweh Yahweh our hope is Yahweh Yahweh we look to Yahweh Yahweh Forever Yahweh. Yahweh. I give you a personal assignment. Search for any genuine wealthy person, rich person you know, who rose through the dignity of kingdom integrity. And I want you to watch their lives. Look beyond the glitz and the glamour 
and you begin to see these forces that the Bible calls true riches. These are the forces playing themselves out. Look beyond the clothes, look beyond the cars, look beyond the houses. What gave this man such a pedigree among the great? What gave this man such access to people? Look, including preachers. What gave these people influence across the globe? Now you will see that it is not just the physical things. You will see that when people really want to bless you, it's not a transfer they do to your account. It's a transfer they do to your mind. They do a transfer to your spirit and a transfer to your mind. And when it enters, your senses may tell you, well, you are still broke. You still do not have a job. But watch the forces of the spirit begin to work themselves out. Meekness plus, what's the second one? Skill, competence, plus credibility, a good name, plus light, plus favor, plus valuable relationships, plus the anointing. And then you wave poverty goodbye. And these forces will lift his hand and force it to wave you back. I am telling you this. Watch this. I don't care the recession that comes upon the earth. Provided it did not wipe humans from the earth, you will still stand tall. I don't care the economic turmoil. It was Jim Rohn that said, you do not prosper off the economy, you prosper off your philosophy, your overall understanding. You see that? Governments will come and go, like I said last week. Economies will come and go civilizations will come and go but these truths are irrefutable they are not opinions those who have become mysteriously wealthy whose lives it looks like you cannot add two and two these are the invisible forces that play themselves in the realm of the spirit and have translated to the manifestation of the blessing you see that there is no secret to this i wish that business schools will incorporate this as they teach so that you don't just limit your teaching to teaching people how to buy and the principles of exchange that is wonderful but intrinsically the world is becoming a lot more psychological than ever are we together yes social capital is greater it's even catching up with intellectual capital this is what you get when you come to church intelligence that you can take back to your company intelligence that you can take back to your church you can go back and begin to have an introspection of your life and see truly that the reason why there's a lot of fluctuation in our finances these are the forces don't blame the business don't blame the investment the bible already tells you that mammon is unrighteous the word unrighteous there is the word unstable it already tells you there will be up and down times what keeps you consistent is the, are the forces so meekness is bringing its own contribution to your life. Value, competence, bringing its own contribution. Are we together? Credibility is bringing its own contribution. All seven cannot fail. The Bible says, give a portion to seven and year to eight. It says, for you do not know the disaster that will come upon the earth. You see, no matter how a little lake can dry up, the well can even dry up. But oceans never dry. Do you know why? Because they have channels that bring water from everywhere. And sometimes those oceans are so deep. In geography, we are taught about something called the aquifer. That when water goes and hits the water bed, it now, it now connects with a main underground, you know, a, 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 a stream of flow that ensures that water is always there. This can happen even for your finances. Don't allow business to make you throw away these forces and say, I am a businessman. I respect what you are saying, but I hope you understand what you are saying. Don't just say, I'm an astute investor. Wonderful. Don't just say, I'm an excellent, I mean, I have favor in my place of work and they are promoting me there. Your greatest confidence should not be the job. 
the business or the investment your confidence should be these seven forces i leave you with this and this will be our prayer as i speak the graces over your life i want you to mention these seven areas one by one and cry in the name of jesus the areas that are not yet at work in your life please love your destiny enough to not be silent your online make sure you pray mention them i'll list them one by one as you pray go ahead and pray go ahead and pray Pray in the name of Jesus, meekness, meekness. I receive that grace, teachability, humility of heart. I throw away pride from my life. The know-it-all mentality, I drive it far from my life. Someone is praying. Receive the grace, pray. Lord, I open up my heart to be competent. I throw mediocrity out. I throw laziness out in the name of Jesus Christ. I submit to learning. I become skillful, valuable, competent, excellent at a global scale. Someone is praying. Pray for credibility. Lord, the grace to walk in integrity. The grace to have a good name. A good name that speaks transgenerationally. Pray for light. I remain a student of light. Access to wisdom. Access to knowledge. Access to understanding. Someone pray. Now pray for favor. Let favor begin to speak in my life. Let favor begin to speak in my life. Someone is praying favor in the city favor in the country favor in nigeria in america in europe all across the globe across my territory my place of work now cry for relationships lord bring to my life strategic prophetic destiny adding relationships relationships that lift relationships that multiply relationships that open doors relationships that give and bring access finally pray for the anointing in multiplied dimensions you don't have to be a man of god in ministry everybody needs the anointing the anointing is the one factor that is responsible for your rising, your shining. And the Spirit entered me when He spake unto me, and it set me upon my feet. Take a minute to pray. Everyone that asks it, receive it. God is opening all kinds of doors. These are the pillars that control lasting wealth. These are the pillars that control lasting wealth. Transgenerational wealth. The capital that buys money. Pray. Money itself is a product. You must have the capital that buys it. The same way money buys other physical products. I will pray for you for a job, even a better one. I will pray for you for ideas, an increase and prosperity in your business. I will pray that God prospers your endeavors, your investments. But beyond those physical things, you must access these intangible riches. The Holy Spirit, the chiefest of them, the Holy Spirit, bring into your life the anointing, amplifying wisdom, giving you the character of meekness, turning you into a competent one like Bezalel, by giving you the spirit of creativity. Hallelujah.
I'm about to speak over your life. Watch this. Now, you know why Abraham became rich. Now, you know why Joseph, even though a prisoner, in one night, Joseph arose and suddenly became a prime minister. You now know the forces that were at work. You now know why Daniel, even though entered Babylon as a slave, within a short time, I hope you know it was not only Daniel who was selected. A number of the boys, eunuchs, were selected. But what was it about Daniel that kept him relevant? These are the forces. Now you know why Bezalel was such a distinguished person. You know why Joseph was the way he was. Gideon, name them. Solomon, aha. Uh -huh. You see what God gave Solomon. God did not give Solomon an investment somewhere. God did not give Solomon elephant tusks in the wilderness. He did not give him gold. He had an encounter and said, oh God, you saw meekness there. I am but a child. How can I lead these people? And God said, that's right. And that gave room for other things. He said, because you have not asked for the life of your enemies, this is what I will give you, an understanding heart. This guy woke up and with one manifestation of competence, his name went around. Kings started coming with their gifts per month to pay homage, including the Queen of Sheba, who would not come for a long time. But once your rising is bright enough, even kings will come to it. What of Jesus? Do you know? The Bible never tells us that Jesus carried his gold, his frankincense and myrrh. We never see a record of him putting it in any account. He got up and went to the wilderness empty-handed and came out returning in the power of the Spirit. He spent 30 years gathering these seven capitals. When embarrassment was imminent, he used the anointing to command the fish to produce coin. Jesus for you. Because he had favor upon him. He said, go to the city whose, uh, the road, whose, whose roads divide. Lose a donkey there that no man had ridden on. You must have favor to make that kind of demand. Jesus for you. Gideon had such grace upon his life. He sounded a shofar and 33,000 people came. You now see why everybody followed Jesus. To the mountain they came. The deserts they came. By the seaside they came. Master! We have toiled all night and Jesus said there is capital that can bring you wealth. You now know what Elijah had that he looked at the dear woman. I may not have oil but there is something I can do. Go and borrow vessels. Your oil will multiply. Jesus, water turning to wine. Look at the, the dominion, the invincibility of these factors over mundane things. Five loaves and two fish. Jesus didn't say is there any bakery close by. He said, no, I know what to do. Five loaves and two fish. And Jesus gave thanks, lifting it up to heaven. He placed something upon it. He said, go and serve them. And they fed 5,000 men, minus women and children. Can I tell you, don't ever say you do not have anything. You are insulting yourself. Now you know. It's incredible how we vacillate like a pendulum, rating our abundance or lack of it by the presence of financial figures. So if you see plus one million, you say I've become one million richer. That is economically intelligent, but it's not a spiritual intelligent statement. One million came because one of these seven factors commanded it to come. So if someone looks at you and says, leave the job. Just suffer on someone, my God. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Shapran Dakadosi. Shabaka Sobran de Gavarados. We look to Yahweh. Yahweh. Our hope is Yahweh, Yahweh. We look 
to Yahweh, Yahweh. Forever, Yahweh. Hallelujah. Let me speak over your life. In the name of Jesus. You came for this meeting tonight. I decree and declare. I want to speak these seven capitals over your life. And as I mentioned them, I want you to shout a loud amen. The grace for meekness and teachability. Receive it in the name of Jesus Christ. Number two, the grace for skill and competence. I release it upon your life right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hear me. The grace for a life of credibility, integrity. Receive it in the name of Jesus Christ. Number four, the passion to pursue wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. I release that grace upon you now. Number five, the mantle of favor like you have never experienced. In the name of Jesus, may it land upon your life now. I hope your heart is open. Number six, every relationship needed for this new season of exploits that would translate even to bring financial abundance. In the name of Jesus, step into that relationship now. Step into that relationship in the name of Jesus. And finally, the power to prosper that comes upon men, that anointing, that engracing that can rest upon a man and compel things to start working. In the name of Jesus, you have come for this service. You are connecting from across the globe. Receive that anointing right now. Receive that anointing right now. Receive that anointing right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. From tonight, let the basis of your confidence not be the money in your account or the physical things you have. No, a combination of meekness and skill and a good name, credibility. Are we together? And light, knowledge, understanding, and then favor and then strategic relationships and the anointing you have that businesses investments jobs or any physical platform are only a means to give these spiritual values expression but you cannot have this and then go down financially no no when the devil wants to destroy your finances he will not come and attack your business or your investments or your job. He will first destroy and stop you from having this. He will bring pride. He will bring laziness and incompetence. Once he has crumbled this capital from your life, then you find out that it will start having a physical effect on your business. You will now blame the business, blame the investment, blame the finance. But what is really to be blamed are the relationships not working or the incompetence or the absence of the anointing. Are we together now? The anointing settles the issue of demon spirits, causes, yokes. The anointing has the assignment of breaking the yoke. So when the anointing is not there, demon spirits, all kinds of wicked spirits can come. When I found this, I began to rejoice. Listen to me. Next time you put your hand in your pocket and you bring out nothing, or next time you look at your bank account, and you see the reading nothing to write home about don't let the devil lie to you and say you are poor and then don't lie to yourself some of you have money but you do not have true riches no meekness no competence no relationships no nothing but somebody just trusted you with a million or a few millions and you believe you are sustainably rich the bankruptcy of this capital will eventually plunge you into penury this is what God is avoiding. Now I'd like you to prophesy and don't feel bad. I'd like you to declare that you and poverty 
will never have to meet again that in the name of Jesus please don't be silent whether as an individual as a ministry that in the name of Jesus in your lifetime regardless your background regardless what has happened before your coming that you will be the one to change to rewrite these narratives I want you to cause the spirit of poverty someone lift your voice and pray it is important that you prosper it's important that you enjoy material abundance material blessings it is important you are free from financial worries financial captivity it is god's will to give you the ple to give you the kingdom his good pleasure as a man of god i want you to pray that you will not be limited as far as finance is concerned the books will be written the conferences will hold the church will be built souls will be saved lives changed believers equipped and mentored you are a businessman i want you to pray you run an ngo i want you to pray i will not be limited because of finances and in this economic all with all the economic problems across the globe in the name of jesus my case will be different by the power of the holy ghost i am walking in abundance I'm walking in increase no going down 10 years from now if Christ tarries I'm still standing going from glory to glory trading these true riches for physical blessings in the name of Jesus let me give you an assignment before I speak over your life I want you to go back home please write this seven spiritual capital write it down and begin to probe your life one by one which of these are not at work in your life and the ones that are there to what degree make it take it as a project just humble yourself and do what I'm asking you to do work on meekness work on competence right work on all of these things and you watch the things that begin to happen in your life when these forces start playing themselves over your finances, you will not know dryness. Believe me, this is not just a prophetic word. I'm telling you what will happen. Now, let me speak over your life. God sent me to not only teach and to preach, but to use the power of the prophetic for the rising of people. There are many people who do not know the power of the prophetic that is the assignment of the anointing to empower men I'm going to speak over your life and you'll be surprised to see the things that start happening they are not empty words they are words that are backed up with the anointing of the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus Christ koinonia all who are connecting connected and are following in the name of Jesus I decree and declare from this night I declare begin to step into a strange order of abundance I release you into a strange and superior order of wealth a strange order of financial blessings in the name of Jesus Christ I don't care what it has been like from the family you came from the economic situation you might be facing now whether in debt whether suffering all kinds of financially related issues in the name of Jesus arise and shine in the name of Jesus arise and shine arise and shine financially in the mighty name of Jesus I declare over every ministry going through financial pain and tension every family going I'm sensing a strong anointing I'm praying upon you every ministry every organization every business I decree and declare beginning from now may these spiritual forces start working for you by reason of these forces activated I declare over your job may it begin to produce maximally I declare over your business endeavor may it begin to produce maximally 
I declare over your investments, may they produce maximally. And I declare over the men that have been sent by God to stand with you and stand by you, I declare enjoy their ministry from tonight. You hear me? By reason of this teaching tonight, every spirit of poverty and lack and failure, every cause of stagnation, parakatosh, ebrendekebalakosh, kabrigatebalata, I declare they lose their hold over your destiny now. They lose their hold over your destiny now. Hear me? I pray for every pastor and every church connecting in the name of Jesus. Even in this supposed global recession, you will not beg. You will not lack. You will not be in want. In the name of Jesus Christ. Help them please. Every ministry here that loves God and yet you are going through all kinds of financial tension that projects do not seem, projects have been halted, whether structural projects, transformative projects, halted because of the absence of financial resources. I declare, as these forces come into play, step into a new season of supplies. And for every family here that has suffered poverty and lack and financial, you know, failure in the name of Jesus, because you came here tonight, may my God begin with you and wipe the tears of your family members. I said, may my God begin with you and wipe the tears of your family members. Let me pray one last time. I just feel led in my spirit to pray for widows, widowers, orphans, all those who their physical support system seem to have gone away from them. Maybe the breadwinner of the family has passed on or maybe there's some kind of issue in the family and right now it looks like those that are around are incapacitated. In the name of Jesus, I declare that as these forces begin to work themselves, let poverty be driven far from your life, far from your family. In the name of Jesus Christ. And everyone who has mismanaged financial resources to your detriment, you've lost money, you've had all kinds of things, you've been downsized because you still have access to these forces. I decree and declare the same way the hair of Samson grew back. I speak to your finances, it must grow back. I speak to your finances, it must grow back. Wave your hands and give Jesus praise. Wave your hands and give him praise. Hallelujah. So hear me. We're about wrapping up, but I want you to carry this superior mentality that your true wealth is not measured in just real estate or money or jobs. Your true wealth is this sevenfold combination of these forces at work in your life. As you engage them, then all the physical expressions like job and business now begin to find their place. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Keep standing. We've already made the altar call. I'll just make one announcement and then we're done. Hallelujah. Next week, by the grace of God, will be a miracle service for the month of April. Hallelujah. I sense like never before that when the days of his power is going to be an extraordinary moment of prayer, praise. I'm going to be teaching you a few things. We'll be praying for the sick and doing that which is anointed us to do. So make sure you do not come alone. Go around this city and across the nations and bring as many who desire a touch from God. Hallelujah. And then just to announce again, that we should all be in prayer as we prepare. I truly believe with my heart that the UK conference is going to be a defining moment, not just in the United Kingdom, but then across Europe. So I want you to pray. There's prayer happening every day. Um, you can, you know, create your own private, you know, prayer platform and begin to pray. You can give 
into the conference if God places in your heart, but make sure you participate. We're taking the life and the power of Jesus to um, Europe and then other announcements about other nations who come uh, in due course. But then please let me encourage you, use this week. Go on our YouTube page again and listen to this message, True Riches, and then invite as many. You know someone whose life and finance is not working, give them a chance to listen to this teaching and let it be for our corporate edification. Have you been blessed tonight? Father, we thank you for giving us this opportunity to learn. We remain students in the school of the spirit. You have imparted wisdom by your word tonight. We decree and declare that we are not only recipients, we are practitioners of your word. Now that we have heard and received, we obtain grace to walk in keeping with these truths. And let the results show in our lives. Let the results show in our families. Let it show in our churches, our businesses, in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare that you are blessed. As you leave this place, let the blessing of the Lord rest upon you. Let these truths that you know now, let it begin to speak in your life. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And this week beginning, I call it a week of favor. I call it a week of wonders. I call it a week of speed. I call it a week of restoration. I call it a week of laughter. I call it a week of rest roundabout. May that be your testimony in the name of Jesus. As you travel, I declare you go well. As you return, I declare that you return well. In the name of Jesus, you are separated from every evil plot of darkness. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We're going to share the grace after which I want you to please hug and greet someone on your way out. Let them know you love them and let them know that God has placed something upon their lives that will improve their destinies. Hallelujah. Let's share the grace together in fellowship. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit, rest and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, all the days of our lives, as we dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. God bless you. Greet one another. See you next week. Walking in abundance, moving with the speed of the Holy Ghost, I am favored. Walking in Moving with the speed of the Holy Ghost, I am favored. I am walking in abundance, moving with the speed of the Holy Ghost. Everything you have been carrying, this is the month to give birth to it. Your week beginning will experience dimensions of favor you have never experienced.